Well, I have always been a really avid reader and writer. My whole life, ever since I was a young kid myself, I knew I wanted to write books. And I started trying to get published when I was about 19 or 20 years old, when I was still in college myself. And I actually wrote three whole novel-length manuscripts before I wrote I Can Make This Promise and before Edie's voice came, popped into my head. And it was towards the end of that third book that I was working on and trying to get published, trying to send out into the world. And I was just facing rejections left and right. And I was starting to feel really dispirited and disheartened. I wasn't sure if I was ever going to make this dream of becoming a published author a reality. And then I came across this flyer for a publishing contest from Penguin Random House, which is one of the big publishing houses in New York City. And they were looking for writers of diverse, marginalized backgrounds who were unpublished, and they wanted their novel submissions that in some way honored Roll of Thunder, Hear My Cry by Mildred D. Taylor. And coming across this flyer, it reminded me of a lot of the books that I really loved myself when I was a kid. And it got me wondering if I were to write a middle grade book that it seemed like addressed some of the things I thought they were looking for, like family themes and cultural identity. What might I bring to the table? And what story, what unique perspective do I have that might suit those criteria? And from there, Edie's voice popped into my head, and then she never really went away. So that is how I first started writing I Can Make This Promise. And after that very first draft of Edie's story, I knew this was the book I was going to keep fighting for through all the rejections and through everything else. And it was going to be my first published book. I fell in love with seeds 20 years ago. So I started volunteering for a little garden. And I learned that these seeds were carrying stories from the families who had taken care of them for many generations. And so I got involved in the work and pretty soon I started writing my own story because I really wanted to convey just how important seeds are for uh, Native communities in terms of recovering the, that, that cultural piece around our indigenous foods. It was my mother who shared a story, her own story when she was about, when she was growing up on the, um, she went to boarding school out on the, uh, it was on the Pine Ridge Reservation, so the Holy Rosary Mission School. So she shared a story when I was growing up that stayed with me until I became an adult and that story is the reason why I started writing. What I have been really happy to see is the hunger People want to know these kinds of stories. They want that relationship with seeds, with water, with the earth. And so that to me is really heartening, really inspiring to see that.